Students, as we have already finished the previous chapter, let us now move on to the next. But before we do that, I would like you to recall something. You might have seen in the movies or on TV serials or for that matter even in real life situations, patients in hospitals are fed by a drip. What is a drip? A drip is a solution which contains water, nutrients and medicines. A tube attached to the drip enters into the arm of the patient. In the arm of the patient, the food enters through the veins to all the parts of the body. If a drip can give nutrition to a patient and the food goes to all the parts of the body, how do you think you and I get our food transported into our body? And precisely for this, we need to study the next chapter which is transportation in animals and plants. Food, water and oxygen are very important for the survival of an organism. This food, water and oxygen needs to be transported to all parts of the body. Simultaneously, all the waste matter from various parts of the body needs to be removed from the body. This transportation through our body is done by the heart and the various blood vessels. And so, the heart and the various blood vessels are referred to as the circulatory system. Let us now study about blood. All of us are very familiar with blood. You might have seen blood flowing when you had a fall or when somebody cut his finger or whatever reason that, that could be. Blood is a bright red fluid which flows through the blood vessels. It is thicker and heavier than water. What then are the functions of blood? Blood transports digested food material from the small intestines to various parts of the body. It also carries oxygen from the lungs to all the cells of the body. Also, it brings back unwanted material from various parts of the body for its removal from the body. Let us now see what the blood is actually made up of. What are the components of blood? Blood is made up of two components. One is the liquid component which we call plasma and the next are the suspended materials which are various cells in the blood. The plasma is 95% water. It is a pale yellow liquid because it carries proteins, hormones and other nutrients for the body. The other suspended materials in the blood are various cells, namely the red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelets. Let us study in brief features of each of these cells. The red blood cells as you can see are disc shaped or round in shape. They are red in color because they contain the respiratory pigment hemoglobin. Oxygen from the lungs attaches to the hemoglobin and this is then conducted to various parts of our body. The white blood cells are colorless and they have no definite shape. However, they perform a very important function. They take care of the immunity of the body. What do I mean by that? Each of the white blood cells is like a soldier fighting infections and germs that enter our body. So they are known as the defense mechanism of the body. Next we have the platelets. Platelets are small fragments of cells which aid in the clotting of the blood. You might have noticed that when you've cut your finger, it bleeds for some time and then it stops. Why does it stop? It stops because these platelets travel through the capillaries where you have hurt yourself. They block the blood from flowing 
thereby enabling the clotting of blood. If you see students, blood is such an important component that cannot be manufactured or produced in a laboratory. So we need to encourage people to go in for blood donation. We also must remember that when we donate blood, the body automatically produces enough of blood for our survival. It must be remembered that we need to have a diet which will contribute to the formation of our red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelets in the required measure for our body. Let us next study about blood vessels. Where does this blood travel? You will see that the tubes or the channels through which the blood flows is referred to as a blood vessel. We human beings in our body have three kinds of blood vessels, namely arteries, veins and capillaries. Arteries are those blood vessels which carry oxygenated blood, that is blood rich in oxygen from the heart to various parts of the body. And as the heart beats and pumps blood into the arteries, it comes with great force and speed as a result of which the walls of the arteries have to be elastic and thick. If you put your finger onto your wrist, you will see that at this portion you will find a sort of a throbbing or a pulsating feeling. This is the heart beat when it pumps the blood into the arteries and this throbbing is referred to as the pulse. We can do this activity now in class and observe how many beats or how many pulses we can measure in one minute. I have counted that my pulse beat for that one minute is 82 beats. And when we count this pulse for that one minute, it is known as the pulse rate. I will repeat, pulse is a throbbing or the movement of the blood from the heart into the arteries and pulse rate is the number of beats that we can feel in a minute. On calculating my pulse rate for one minute, I have found that it is 79 beats per minute. The normal pulse rate for any person at resting is between 72 to 80 beats per minute. Now when you do this exercise for yourself, kindly write today's date. You could also try this exercise at home with your parents. You could also do another thing, jog for a few minutes and then calculate your pulse rate. So you would know what is the difference in your pulse at rest and during exercise. The next blood vessel that we need to study are the veins. The veins are vessels which carry deoxygenated blood, that is blood rich in carbon dioxide from the various parts of the body into the heart. And this is assured by the presence of valves in the veins. These valves do not allow blood to flow backward but always flow towards the heart. The veins have got thin walls. And the last group of vessels are referred to the capillaries. Capillaries are fine blood vessels which can be very clearly seen on our cheek. If you look at your cheek in the mirror, you will notice that you can see small vessels blood vessels in your cheek. Now, every artery which flows onto the tissues divides itself into smaller capillaries. These capillaries further join to merge into the veins and as a result the arteries bring in nutrients from the heart to various parts of the body and the capillaries deliver these nutrients. These capillaries further 
with the unwanted material join to form the veins which take this blood back to the heart and this completes the circulatory system and because the circulatory system is closed within the vessels it is referred to as a closed circulatory system present in human beings. So with this we end the matter for today's students. I hope you will read the lesson and understand what has been done. I will see you in the next class.